Our God is alive. As we just finished singing, this is a, an assurance that we have that since the day in which we began to walk in the presence of this God, we have found out that we are not alone. He speaks with us, He speaks through the Word, He speaks through the praises, He speaks through the miracles and the operations, He speaks in the many different ways. And the Holy Spirit that Jesus led for us and speaks to our hearts every instant. We are walking towards the eternity. We're going to open our Bibles and I want to greet the church with the peace of the Lord and also who are connected with us as well. It's just that the song, I came already accelerated because of the song we just said. Those who are connected with us, I know that many brethren connect with us to the service in Pompano. We want to greet everyone as well with the peace of the Lord Jesus. We are going to open our Bibles in the book of Revelations, chapter 22. We're going to read just one verse. I was thinking, I don't know if it was Pastor Sabado who preached this verse one day. It doesn't matter. Somebody preached this verse another day also in my church. The deacon was going to preach a few weeks, Sundays ago. He was going to preach in Exodus. And then I asked, where are you going to preach about? I'm going to preach from Exodus. And I said, very well, very good. When the last song began to play, the last part of this last song began to sing. The Lord gave a revelation saying, preach about Revelation 22, 17. I know that it's just about to deliver Mass, but if you want to see what the Lord has to give to you tonight, is this text here. I'm going to preach this then. It is interesting how the Lord how the Lord, Lord works. There was a simple message, but that special text that night, the Lord wanted to speak particularly to a man that entered in that place. And that text was the experience that caused this man to receive a blessing in the service of that night. Sometimes God prepares a service for 100 people, but God prepares something special for a single person. And we are all here <coughs> vessels on the hands of this mighty God. Chapter 22, oh, verse 17 says the following. Sorry. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come. And let him who hears say, Come. And let him who thirsts come. Wherever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Lord, may the word tonight may speak to our souls and the thirst of our soul may be quenched by your Holy Spirit tonight. We ask you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Somebody asked me another day. I believe it was even a brother from the Church of Pompano, a visitor, I think. And he asked, do you preach about the book of Revelations? Then I answered, Look, this is the, the book that we preach about the most and hear about the most in this church because this book has the greatest message. It brings in it a great desire of the church that serves this God. We don't have, uh, we don't know how to, s not to speak and about, uh, not to s say those things. And begin to read and, it's, and the Bible says, the new Jerusalem, is the, the gates are like pearls. I, I begin to think, it's a pearl that is like a, a gate. How are we going to go through this gate? And the streets are made out of gold. And in the center of the city, there is a square. And all those things in, those, in this square are uh, made out of gold. So this book is of extreme importance for us because it brings the great promise and the description of the great blessing that we believe in the presence of our God. It is interesting that the text that we just read speaks of a desire of the Spirit and of the Bride. We have heard we, and we have seen anyone, not only people here from the Church Maranatha, but from any church, 
the world is under a judgment. We look around us, the great celebrities, the men, the politicians, the entire world is under a judgment. Nature is under a judgment. And all those things, they are prophetic. And they speak of a moment, and they proclaim a moment about a moment that is prophesied in the word of the Lord, which is of extreme importance for the one who serve and those who are in the presence of the Lord. I always tell everyone the following. The book of Revelation is not a book that brings fear to anyone. I remember that when I was a child, I was always afraid of this book. Very afraid. My neighbor, she used to ask me, do you want to go to church with me? And when we entered the church, this book was like a horror movie. The pastor preached so much and he shouted and because the scorpion and oh my god this is very scary and I was I would go home terrorized and then the following day she always invited me to go to church I never rejected an invitation I would always leave the church terrorized but we found in the presence of the Lord that this book that for the faithful church it, transfers peace because the Holy Spirit that reveals all things that confirms salvation that is in you says you have nothing to worry about because your anxiety, your wishes, they are going to be fulfilled in the day of the rapture or if you depart earlier if we depart I tell you my, my brethren we are going to meet uh, on, in the clouds, those who the part of will resurrect first, and in the sequence, those who are going to be raptured. But this book speaks of a promise that was left by the Lord Jesus, and that is confirmed today by the Holy Spirit. And the promise is the following: If you accept the Lord, if you live our lives in the presence of the Lord without going back, because the greatest problem of the gospel today and of the Christian is that the people are going backwards in the commitment that they have made with the Lord a long time ago. The Lord has spoken about a man who entered in the house of the Lord tonight. The Lord has said that you already served, have already served the Lord in the past. And the Lord is speaking about a spiritual gift. He was saying that you have gone astray from the Lord and even have done many things that you didn't do when you had an experience with the Lord. This is a consequence from you, of you going distant from the Lord. But the Word tells us the following, whoever touch on the plow can never look backwards. It is not time for us to look backwards. If we ask the children, I don't know, I know that many are not here. I know that there are many children here. But if you ask the children, what is the period of the church? Well, if we uh, have been studying the seven letters of the book of Revelations, they will answer the church of Laodicea. The church is living the last period. After this church, there is no other church. But what is this about Laodicea and the church? You who entered here for the first time, you, you may be asking yourself, what is Laodicea? The word of the Lord says that the Dawn to write uh, seven letters to seven churches, and he writes a letter to each one of those churches. And each letter is related to a period of Christianity in the history of humanity. And though there are 2,000 years of history, and this church, each church comprehends a period. The church of Ephesus, Ephesus corresponds to the first 300 years, and then Smyrna, about 400 years, and on and on. But the church which we are living is a church that has begun. Do you remember when? 1700, 18, 1815. It doesn't matter. What matters is that this church that is living, this church is living the last period. There's no other church according to the word of God after this one. This church is, is the one which is being prepared for the rapture. What is the rapture? The rapture is when the Lord Jesus, the word says that Jesus is going to come back in the clouds and the, the angels are going to be sent to the four corners of the earth and they will gather all the saints. Uh, another day was thinking about that. I'm going to say the following. 
You want to know if somebody was raptured or not? Just look for the cell phone. Whenever you see a bunch of cell phones spread around on the floor of the church, and the church was raptured. Nobody's going to take a cell phone when they are raptured. It was going to be the first way you know about it. And then people are going to start asking, what is this people? We have a promise of the Lord for our lives. Whoever believes in this promise, whoever has been serving the Lord, whoever has been made separation between the things of this world and the things of eternity and have chosen to be in the presence of God in faithfulness, those are the ones who are going to be raptured. They are going to be raptured. This is the promise the Lord has made for each one of us. It's difficult. No, it's not easy. Because if it was easy, the Word would say that many would have been chosen, but the Word says that few are the ones who are chosen. But the Gospel comes uh, filled with things and mysteries that are precious, that no one else has. Yesterday we were in a wedding, and a young man took a Uber and went to church by Uber. And on the way, he told to the driver, I am part of an evangelical church. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We serve God. Why don't you go there one day and watch a service with us? God has a blessing for you. So she asked, is it possible for when I deliver there, I would get out of the car and you pray for me? And they said, oh, of course. And then Pastor Sabado is there. No, we're going to call the pastor and we're going to pray for you. And she got out of the car. This lady, she's Patricia, Patricia, her name. She's driver of the Uber who came, brought me here. And she needs a prayer. And we said, for sure. And we asked, do you have any special need? And she answered, Pastor, my problem is the following. I had a cancer uh, on breast, and I treated the cancer on the breast. A few years later, I had cancer on my throat, and I took care of the cancer. And this week, the doctor told me that I have cancer on my lungs. And she said, look, I don't know what else to do. I don't know who to seek. And I tell you, you who serve the Lord, who have a secret that the world doesn't have. In the moment of difficulty, you can go towards this God with your sickness, and He will be there with open arms to bless you. And I tell you, my brother, you may not be cured, but the peace that He's going to place in your heart and the assurance there's no sickness that is able to steal your blessing. I don't know if I told the brethren here, but I went to visit a sister that attended our church a long time. She went to North Carolina. She doesn't say a single word in English. She doesn't even know how to say yes. She only speaks Russian. She doesn't speak Spanish. And a sister came from the north of the state. I speak Russian, a Russian woman. And she said, Pastor, this lady that used to attend your church for so long, she's here and she wants to receive a visitation. And so I said, let's go. I'm going to visit her. Uh, ho however, she, you cannot bring a lot of people because she's in a place. It's just a bedroom that has a bed. Her house is just a little bed, a little kitchen, a stove. It's, she's living in a very small place. If you bring with... Uh, you three people, her house will be full. No problem, I answered. We're going to go, I'm going to go with her, just a few brothers, one or two at most, so that we can pray for her. And then we went. And when I arrived there, she, the sister said, it's been two months, she's in bed, she doesn't get up, she's very sick. Then I went to her house. I was amazed because she was sitting down on the bed. You know how we, when we were just finished taking a shower, she was all dressed up. She was sitting on a chair and was waiting for me. Then I asked her, how are you doing? And the translator, doing the translation from Russian. And she came and embraced me. She hugged me. And she said, Pastor, I don't know what happens to my husband. Her husband also doesn't speak a single word in, of English. He only, he only speaks Russian. My husband doesn't want to go to a Russian church with me. And then I asked, why don't, don't you go to 
the Russian church with me. And she asked, because your church is Maranatha. And I t told him, how can you go to a Maranatha church if you only speak Russian? You don't understand a single word that they say. And he answered, because there is something in that place that I cannot find in a church where they speak our tongue. I don't feel anything when we go to that place. They speak of the word of the Lord, is but it's, if it is, it is if the word has no life. And when I go there, I don't understand anything. But when I li go to this place, I live lighter. My soul is lighter. So then she spoke the pastor. And she told the pastor, "I called you to pray for me." She, she, her body's all curved. She's old. Then she told the pastor, "Pastor." I I know that I don't have much time here on this earth, and I'm not worried with this. Every day that passes by, my this my this body of mine grows weaker, and it's harder for me to walk. But I tell you, it is interesting that as the days pass by and my body is withered, my faith is growing, is growing more and more, and I I'm sure of one thing. The moment in, my, in which my soul lifts this body, in the same instance, I will be walking with my Lord Jesus Christ in glory. And I, and I told her, my sister, I came to pray with you, but I want you to pray for me. <laughs> Because I'm going to leave this place with a blessing. And that's the blessing that we have of serving this God. In the world, you will never find this kind of experience. You, you will never find it. You're not going to find a God that is beside you, that go with, goes with you where no man can go. And I tell the sisters in my church, your husband may forsake you, your son may forsake you, your wife may, may forsake you, but the Lord who we serve never abandon us. He always with us throughout this journey and will be with us all the way to the end. And we believe that we will walk with him in the heavenly mansions. This is the promise that he has for each one of us. So, if somebody asks you, what kind of church is this? What is the time of, the, of this church? Is the time of the church of Laodicea. I was saying to the church another day, when the Holy Spirit spoke about the church of Laodicea, he said something very weird and difficult to comprehend sometimes. It says the following, because you are not cold or hot, Because you are warm, I'm going to throw you up from my mouth. And I told the brethren the following. We, the Christian who wants to go to eternity, cannot be warm. We cannot be warm Christians. The warm Christian is the one who comes to the church. He says he's Christian, but he has not made a definition of the Lord in his heart. A sister asked me, Pastor, how can I be sure that I'm going to heaven? And I answered my sister. My sister, it's not the pastor, it's not a church of Maranatha, it's not a... a Presby uh, seminar class is the Holy Spirit. You need an experience with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, when He enters in us, He operates in our lives a transformation. And no one is able to change this understanding in your life. No one. I remember that my father used to say when we became Christian, I was very young. My sisters and I, my father, My sister became a Christian, and she was a woman of prayer. She, I thought it, she was praying too much. <laughs> my sister, when she vanished, and, would, and my mother would ask me, uh, where is your sister? And, and my sister was locked up in the bathroom praying, praying. My parents were persecuting us, and the more they persecuted us, the more we prayed. And they ended up becoming Christians as well. And it was first me, and then my two sisters, and then four, and all the, the cousins. And my parents are all angry with us. But when the Holy Spirit entered into the heart of man, there's no family, there's no one that can convince you otherwise. Because when the Holy Spirit speaks with you, no one can change what is inside of your heart. How can I have assurance of salvation? I can tell you what the Bible says. The word says the following. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, if you confess, and if you believe that God resurrected Him, the word says that you will be saved. But now, if you have the, once you have this understanding, you need to walk in the presence of God. So I was in the addictions. 
now this this type of uh, situation for me is not comparable with the walk on the with the Lord. So now I leave this stuff behind, and I continue walking. And I used to say s certain things. No, these things I used to say it, it's not comparable with my walk. And then you abandon those things because now the Holy Spirit, which is in you, will convince keeps convince you throughout your way and you understand that it's more important to be on this walk than any other walk than any other direction that may be out, out there we we understand and we have a secret that the world doesn't have we cannot let go of this experience for anything so the Holy Spirit says the following because you are warm I'm going to throw throw you up from my mouth and I advise you that from me you may buy gold that was burned on fire. The advice of the Holy Spirit is the following. You need an experience at this moment with the Holy Spirit. You need to plead to the Lord. Lord, put out your spirit uh, on my life so that I may, may be able to walk in your presence with the assurance that my walk is taking me to eternity with you. Whoever pleads to the Lord will be filled with this experience. In this blessing, that's what the Lord has done with us every day. Every day. Uh, an American lady spoke to me yesterday. How different is your wedding? And then I asked her, what did you see that was different? And she said, it's funny that you, Jesus is the focus of everything that you do. Everything that you preach, every service. And then I answered my sister. I know that the bride was very pretty, dressed in white, and the groom dressed with his best suit, but our service this year has only a single objective, which is to glorify the name of our Savior and to praise Him because our families, they are built in the presence of the Lord because one day He has reached us. One day He has brought uh, uh, on us those experiences. He is the center of everything. He is the center of our lives. He is the center of the service. He is the center of everything that we do and we speak. And whoever has an experience with Jesus, this Jesus doesn't want anything else. He wants to continue eternally in this life and the next. The next that we, that we will live. The one, the one that after we abandon this body, we will live an eternal life in the presence of our God. This is our assurance that we have. That's the message that we as Christians need to have whatever you go. And we glorify the name of this Jesus for this. Amen. Let us praise the name of the Lord.
All the glory be given to you, Lord. Glory to Jesus. The Lord has shown his aspect of the covenant. There is a man that God wanted to make a new agreement, a new covenant. The, uh, the Lord has shown in another spiritual gift, another project. And the Lord has placed a new project before you. You had your, your plans, your, your trajectory already scheduled, but the Lord has a better plan for your life. There's no better plan than the plan that God makes for us. Walking in this world without the Lord is very difficult, but walking with this God, I'm going to tell the brethren that, and I'm going to lie saying that it's, it's easy. It's commitment with the church with so much joy to be able to know that you have a family. Wherever you go, wherever you go, we are family. We're praying for one another. We're paying a price. We have this element, this agent, which is Holy Spirit that unites us. Wherever we go, we are connected with the same message, with the same hope, with the same word, with the same God, with the same faith, and the same assurance that one day we will meet again together, all in eternity, on the arms of this powerful God. Let us stand up and praise the name of the Lord. Lord, we exalt you and glorify you for the privilege of being once again in your house and beginning this new week in your presence, knowing that you will go with us throughout our journey. We glorify you. We give you praises because your promise is faithful and is true and it is fulfilled daily in our lives. We praise you and glorify you for everything. In the name of Jesus, amen. In your name we say that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon all of us and with the, the entire, all the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. We are at the disposal of everyone to pray for the ones who desire. If you are visiting the church tonight, we are here at your disposal. We want to pray with you to speak a little more of, about this plan, uh, this project of Jesus. Uh, our next meeting is going to be when? This come, our next meeting is going to be this Tuesday. We are having here doctrine studies. Make an effort to be in the house of the Lord. The doctrine is very important because it is a foundation for your walk, for you to evangelize. How are you going to speak about the Lord if you don't know where is the answer? So you come here on Tuesday. Tuesday is when we learn together. If you don't, don't understand, you can ask the pastor or the deacon, what did he say there? It is a service that has this uh, easiness. And you learn, and tomorrow, if your neighbor, he asks you something, then you answer, hey, because the word of the Lord and open up the Bible and show him what you learned on this Tuesday. Amen. And I say the peace of the Lord to everyone.